did um, a very snippy interview with Mariella Frostrup, and she said, she said, what are your, what are your, what are your diaries are? Which is a bit lazy, really, because she might have read them, you know. And I said, uh, well, usual girl things, snogging, boys, uh, lipstick, that's it. And she said, well, is that it? I mean, is that all that girls do? Is that all you say they do? And, and she was quite annoyed about it, but I'm afraid it's true. But the film's coming out very soon. Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snog. It's out, actually. It's out already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ha have you seen it? I take it you've... I have. I was just, I've got to be a bit careful because I was just, I brought up to Edinburgh this um, article and unfortunately, I mean, I'm a bit better today, but this was the, the day after the premiere in my hotel room and I think I'm slightly unguarded, to say the least, in this interview. <laughs> and she said, did you like the film? And I, I, she said I was very careful at first and said, you know, the cast's very lovable, which they are. But I didn't have anything to do with it and it's very, it's much sweeter than the books. But they seem to, in principle, not let writers anywhere near their own work. I would have liked to have been a bit more edgy, but I thought there could have been loads more jokes in it. You know, I'm a real per fan of jokes, and it's been, it's been smoothed out and made a lot sweeter. And in particular, there's the parents, you know, I always had a very glitchy relationship with my dad in particular. Um, but in the film, Georgia actually goes to his place of work and begs them in tears for her dad to be sent home. And I told my dad, he said, well, that's a bit bloody unlikely, isn't it? <laughs> From the north, you know, and I would actually not have been able to cast it myself because I'm too near to it. I would, you know, I went down to the castings and uh, I was just saying, to all the girls were going, hi, hi, can I be Georgia? And I was going, yes, yes, to everybody. <laughs> so I, I couldn't have chosen. No, she's a good actress, you know, she's called Georgia Groom. I don't know. She was in something really horrible, actually, called London to Brighton. She played a sort of a little prostitute. She wasn't. She was made into being a prostitute, and it's really, you know, tough stuff. But she's a great actress. Yeah, she could do anything actually. So if they pumped more comedy into it, she could definitely go for that. And how did you first get into the first book? I think you had a column at one point, didn't you? So I wrote this column about um, having to have my shoes surgically removed. I used to really like small stiletto slingback things. So I forced my feet into these massively small shoes, wore them all night, fell out with my boyfriend, walked home and fell asleep. And the shoes actually embedded themselves. They cut into my feet so badly that the skin kind of grew over the top and I couldn't get them off. So I had to go have them cut them off uh, in the casualty department. Actually, the surgeon said um, he was furious because obviously he got really ill people there, not some twit, <laughs> embedded shoes. So he came in and he looked at me and he said, oh, I'm going to have to cut them off. And I went, oh, please, sir, please, can't you save them like that? And he thought I meant my feet. And I made <laughs> these really nice shoes. And actually, then this uh, publisher phoned up and said, would you like to write a book for us, a teenage girl's diary? And I said, uh, why? And she said, because I've never read anything so childish and self-obsessed as your <laughs> article. When she goes to the uh, KISS instructor, I can't remember the name you <laughs> used, his name as it happens. <laughs> Are you sh How did he get that kind of job? And he just volunteered, essentially. And we used to queue up so politely outside his house. To, and he had a timer and everything. Wow. <laughs> no, and that was your first kiss? Yeah. I don't really keep a formal diary, but I sort of, I might do it. It's a classic of me. I might do it for a day or two. Um, and, but then I, I do like funny things, so I quite often write down funny things. It, this is me as a grown-up remembering stuff. They don't. But then, then they'll start something anecdote and they'll say, oh yeah, you know that bit where you did, um, you know, where Dave the Laugh burrowed through this, this classroom wall into the next class? Well, so, uh, you know, something really funny happened at school today to us and I'll go, what is it? And they'll go, and they just start laughing. You know, in that hysterical, you want to kill them because they should stop laughing, but they're not going to. And they just can't tell you what it is, nor can they remember any funny bits from it. Because they're too busy being in it to sort of be anecdotal, you know what I mean? They're too busy. Do you see yourself as having the voice of a 14-year-old girl that a 14-year-old girl wouldn't actually be able to have? Usually. I mean, of course there'll be smart ones who can do that, but you generally don't have that view on what you're doing, do you? You don't see the funny side of it. I never did. <laughs> I have to say, I and I say it every time, but it's, it, I do mean it, Scotland was actually the first place where I really, people really got it.